The primary reason we want to use GPUs is the extreme computational power that they offer. There are two major advantages the GPUs have over CPUs, tremendous computational throughput and extremely high memory bandwidth. This graph illustrates how the computational throughput of NVIDIA and Intel processors have increased during this decade, measured in units of billions of floating point operations per second. The green lines represent NVIDIA's flagship GPU at different points in time, whereas the blue lines represent Intel's flagship CPU at different points in time. The five main workstations we have in our lab have GeForce GTX Titans, and the big workstation we have has a single Tesla K40. Focusing our attention on the GeForce Titan, we can see that the amount of computational throughput the GPU offers us is almost an entire order of magnitude greater than Intel's corresponding CPU. The reason behind the discrepancy in floating point capability between graphics processors and CPUs is that the GPU is specialized for compute intensive, highly parallel computation, exactly what graphics rendering is all about, and is therefore designed such that more transistors are devoted to data processing rather than data caching and advanced control logic, as we will see in the next slide. CPUs are designed to minimize latency and work very fast on just a few tasks. To achieve this latency minimization, the majority of the area of a CPU is dedicated to very sophisticated control logic and on-chip cache. This design works extremely well for very general purpose programs, such as running an operating system. Whereas CPUs are designed to minimize latency, GPUs are designed specifically to maximize computational throughput. This design is characterized by dedicating the majority of the silicon's area to a massive number of arithmetic logic units, which NVIDIA calls CUDA cores. More specifically, the GPU is well suited to address problems that can be expressed as data parallel computations where the same program is executed on many data elements in parallel. Because the same program is executed for each data element, there is a lower requirement for sophisticated control logic. And because it is executed on many data elements, the memory access latency can be hidden with calculations instead of big caches. In order to properly utilize a GPU, the parts of the program that can be parallelized must be decomposed into a large number of threads that can run concurrently. In CUDA, these threads are defined by special functions called kernels. A kernel is simply a function that is executed on the GPU. The execution of kernel is called launching a kernel. When we launch a kernel, the kernel is executed as a set of threads. Each thread is mapped to a single CUDA core on the GPU. The two main pieces of hardware in the CUDA programming model are the CPU and the GPU, each with their own dedicated memory region. The CPU, together with the computer's RAM, is referred to as the host. Similarly, the GPU, together with its own dedicated DRAM, is called the device. The CPU is very good at running serial programs. The problem with CPUs is if they run into a portion of code that is massively parallel, this part of the program will likely cause a bottleneck in the flow of the program, since CPUs are just not designed for massively parallel throughput. Since GPUs are very good at running a part of a program that is very parallel, we want to offload these massively parallel portions of the code onto the GPU. Using the host and device together is termed heterogeneous parallel programming. This is where CUDA comes in. CUDA is the heterogeneous parallel programming language designed specifically for NVIDIA GPUs. CUDA is simply C with a set of extensions that allows for the host and device to work together. In the CUDA programming model, the host is in control of the program. For the most part, a CUDA program will, will run just like a traditional piece of software would on the CPU. Whenever we run into a portion of code that can be massively parallelized, we will pass the execution of that portion of the code to the device. The host and device talk to each other over the, over the PCI Express bus. 
the PCI Express bus is very slow relative to the host and device, so the cost of exchanging data between the host and device is very expensive. Therefore, the only portions of the code that we want to execute on the device are the parts that are massively parallel. Let's take a closer look at the concept of a CUDA thread. To utilize the massive number of cores on the GPU, we want to execute CUDA kernels as a very large number of threads. The GPU is designed to execute each kernel as thousands or even millions of threads. CUDA threads execute in a single instruction, multiple data fashion, commonly termed SIMD in the computer architecture literature. That is, each thread executes the same instruction, but on a separate piece of data. The exact manner in which threads execute is slightly different from the precise definition of the SIMD model. NVIDIA calls their version of SIMD SIMT, which is an acronym that stands for Single Instruction Multiple Thread. The exact difference between SIMD and SIMT is not really important here but these terms are thrown around in the CUDA literature, so just think of these terms as having the same meaning. Another thing to note is that threads do not all execute at the same rate. Even though each thread is performing the same operation, the set of data being computed on in each thread is generally different, which can give rise to threads from the same kernel launch executing at different rates. In order to organize how threads are mapped to cores on the GPU, CUDA has a hierarchy of threads. Now this is one of the most important concepts in CUDA's programming model. There are three levels in the hierarchy, which we will discuss now. At the lowest level of the hierarchy, we have individual threads. We've already seen the thread, which is the execution of a kernel on a single piece of data. Each thread gets mapped to one CUDA core on the GPU when the kernel is launched. In the next level up the hierarchy, we have a structure called a block. Sets of threads are grouped into blocks. When the kernel is launched, the blocks get mapped onto corresponding sets of CUDA cores, which will be covered in the following lecture. At the highest level of the CUDA hierarchy, we have grids, which are collections of blocks. The entire kernel launch is executed as one grid, which is mapped onto the entire GPU and its memory. In summary, one kernel launch executes as one grid, which is mapped onto the entire device. To keep terms in order, it may be helpful to think of threads as elements of blocks and blocks as elements of grids. So each grid is composed of a set of blocks, which are organized into either a 1D, a 2D, or a 3D structure. In this example, the block structure is composed of a 3 by 2 grid. So there are 3 blocks in the X dimension and 2 blocks in the Y dimension, giving us a total of 6 blocks in this grid. Analogously, blocks are composed of threads which are also organized into either a 1D, a 2D, or a 3D structure. In this same example, the thread structure is composed of a 4x3 block. That is, there are 4 threads in the X dimension and 3 threads in the Y dimension, giving us a total of 12 threads per block. Since this example has 6 blocks per grid and 12 threads per block, we have a total of 72 threads in the grid for this specific example. Said another way, when we launch this kernel corresponding to this grid, there are a total of 72 threads that will execute on the GPU concurrently.